Greetings friends, it's me, one of twenty nine. Going on another walk and uh I'm repost uh posting a reply to WSG four. And uh thanks for getting back to me. That was great, I knew you had some trouble <laughs> uploading. But uh here it's raining like crazy and uh hopefully I'll get this done before the downpour. Had some sun yesterday but it's been pretty dark here all week. Hopefully hopefully things will look look better uh, as summer comes on us here here more kind of warmed up and we're we're getting some rain which is a good thing my trail was all snowy anyways um glad you uh looked at the link and, and checked it out and uh the reason why i posted the jewish uh viewpoint in there was because a lot of times uh we forget we forget what the jewish perspective was on the biblical text because we read uh, Christian material all the time we forgot actually how they thought about it and felt about it so um, you said that you felt a little bit insulted by those articles concerning John about how it was made up and the like um, when you felt insulted um, you can take that feeling and apply it to Jews uh, when um, Christians uh, discuss their text with ideas of Christology in it. So, the same feeling is there. So, I posted those links intentionally to get across the Jewish uh, mindset concerning those texts. So, um, you still hold that uh, Jesus' uh, message was different than Mendoza and the Charismatic Movement, in that his followers seen him as Messiah and he claimed to be Messiah in the text of John. And it's in the text of, well, the Apostle Paul actually started probably, earliest text is uh, 1 Thessalonians, but Paul is the one that started the religion about Jesus, which influenced probably a lot of these other communities to start uh, seeing uh, the religion about Jesus. And John is one of those texts. So, um, to use John in the religion about Jesus would be correct. Because, uh, it's a totally different kind of idea. It's more about uh, eschatology uh, and theology and Christology more so than the message of Christ, even though you can find it sprinkled in. But the main point in the Gospel of John was to show that uh, that community thought that uh, Jesus was um, an incarnation of the deity. So, if he was different, and if his apostles had seen him as the Messiah, his disciples did that, then we have another issue on our hands. Because then we have to start talking about the Greek and Roman uh, mystery cults that existed at the time, and how that impacted the thinking. Because there was a four-tier pantheon in those. There's also a four-tier pantheon in, in Hebrew uh, literature and, and those ideas. However, in, in Christianity, and, and there still exists, the four-tier pantheon. So, uh, you, you have different groups of different beings or deities doing different kinds of things. Uh, you, you even mentioned the saints and um, angels and uh, higher beings. And then finally, the God, which we like to, uh, well, Christians like to um, make into a triune kind of idea with Father, Son, Holy Spirit idea. So thinking about the uh, Greek and, and, and Roman ideas of deities, there was no state religion. I mean, there was no separation of church and state. And it was your responsibility to, in a way, honor the state religion uh, because if you didn't, it was taboo. So even in the Temple of Jerusalem, you find this in Josephus, um, a sacrifice was given um, uh, for the state, for the state of Rome. And they were allowed to perform rituals as long as that happened. When that didn't happen, there was a, uh, it was kind of like an act of no confidence or an act of defiance. And, and, you know, they thought that, you know, it would bring bad luck or it would be taboo. You see the same thing happening um, in uh, the Old Testament when Achan and his family is burned in the valley for taking um, 
the, the gold and, and burying it in his tent. That was taboo because that was a holy war sacrifice. That whole city was to Yahweh. He broke the commandment. And so that was taboo. And you can't have taboo and be successful. So him and his family are taken out. And everything he owns taken out and burned. Horrible story, but um, the same idea progressed through cultures. And we find it in the Roman era. So you even have sons of God in, in the Roman imperial cults. Especially uh, Vespasian was seen as a god. Therefore, Titus would be the son of a god. Uh, even Julius Caesar was considered a god. You find such things. Um, you find such things on on Roman coins of that era. Also, uh, another thing that the Greeks and Romans thought was that a lot of pagan deities, um, pagan. I don't mean in a derogatory way. Pagan just here means non-Christians. Uh, who who did not um, believe in one God, or they were not Jewish, uh, but had polytheistic. So when I say pagan, I don't mean it in a derogatory term. It means polytheistic, many many deities. And they all had many deities, and they exchanged these deities. So when one town or, or nation conquered another, a lot of times the people would gravitate towards this deity and accept it, because obviously, if they won, that was you know, they thought the most popular deity. Another thing, people weren't all that concerned with the afterlife um, because the troubles of the day, the troubles of the day were so terrible that they didn't have time to think about the afterlife and think about um, pleasing the gods to gain rewards for the afterlife like we do today. So, I mean, back then you could die of an abscessed tooth. And, and hunger and starvation. You could have a famine in your village one year, be starving the following because it would take you a long time to recover. So, so all these things were just to survive day by day. And, and so what's interesting is other people of that time um, and other leaders of that time had mystery cults spring up. Mystery cults sprung up. Uh, Dionysus, the cult Dionysus, called Cyrus and Isis being one of them. And uh, what was interesting is you can see it uh, floating into Christianity, into this uh, tiered pantheon. Uh, when I was able to go to Cairo, Egypt, and, and we went to the uh, island of Philae, to the Temple of Isis, in there, in the Temple of Isis, was chipped across on the altar of Isis. And, and a lot of the associations between Isis holding Horus um, was actually associated with the Virgin Mary and Christ. So, so here already... Here already, we've seen con concepts of the Virgin Mary, concepts of, of, of Horus being adopted by people in the area, and, and, also, and also ideas of saints, as you mentioned, all go into this pantheon, which very much looks like Romanization and Greek Hellenization. So you think about the Greek Hellenization and how the Romans overtook uh, the Greek religion and made, made it into a statewide religion, which, um, if that was your religion, and if you seen the Romans as gods, uh, you'd be less likely to form an insurrection, because who wants to fight against a god? And uh, they renamed all the Greek gods, Roman gods, so who's to say, who's to say that that didn't also happen um, in Christianity as a form of Christianity? being absorbed by the Romans as a tool to quell violence. Now, I'm not ready to jump all over that theory. I just put it out there. Both uh, Bart Ehrman, in his text, uh, Introduction, Introduction to the New Testament, uh, I'll post it as a link. And then Atwell, Atwell, who's kind of controversial, uh, discusses it in his book, Caesar's Messiah. So because the two scholars, uh, uh, Bar Ehrman uh, suggested it. Atwell wrote extensively about it. I'm starting to climb on board. However, I'm not. I'm not crazy about it, but um, because more people are starting to talk about it, uh, I just had a conversation with Uzi Yahoo, and uh, we, we talked about it. And then I got Bar Ehrman's uh, New, uh, New Testament introduction yesterday, and uh, he he had a whole chapter about that. Um, but the thing is. 
this, they, they, the scholars are still able to question was new Christianity or what the apostles did to Christ making a religion of them because the, the followers of Honey did not make a religion out of them. Um, however, the followers of Christ did. So what's interesting is, you know, scholars are saying, well, can we actually say that this new religion, Christianities, and its varying forms are mystery cults? Because little is known, uh, very little is known about mystery cults. And also what's interesting is uh, the idea that seeped into the Jewish charismatic, well, Jewish movement and Christianity was the idea of prayer to influence the actions of the gods. Um, this is after the sacrifices. This is this is outside of that. So it's kind of seen as as magic, whereas a prayer being said or a saying being said um, would influence the gods opinion in your favor and, and what's really fascinating is all the people uh, in our views today who make intercessions uh, supposedly for things that happen to human beings uh, here on earth and it's really interesting so um, something to think about let me post in a link to um, um, the golden bow um, which talks about use of magic and religions and it's really interesting if you if you can look at some of that stuff. Um, deals with healings and all that. It's a great anthropology book. And also, uh, I wanted to bring up um, the history aspect of Christianity. It's going to be much different than um, the belief and theology of Christianity and, and doctrine. Um, the Greeks and Romans, they didn't have doctrine. They didn't have one set of belief that said, you have to believe... Uh, this way, or you're not of the religion. Um, they mixed and matched. Um, you know, uh, say for example, if that was in our day, a, a Mormon could be a could be a Jew, you know, so to speak. Um, they mixed and matched, and they borrowed, and so it was a more or less cultural exchange for the whole, for the whole of the nation, which is really interesting. And uh, the same happened in Judaism when they came into the land of the Canaanites, which is one reason why you find the prophets yelling about it so much, is because they started absorbing all these ideas. And if you actually uh, read texts about the Temple of Solomon and all the things that went into it, especially the visions of Ezekiel, uh, where he talks about the abominations in the Temple, uh, there, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of interesting um, symbols and um, rites that went into that, into the, into the Temple of Solomon that uh, really upset a lot of people. So, uh, it's been done before. So, so in creating the religion about Jesus, if he was different, then we have to look at, was it a mystery cult? And did it fall within the idea of the mystery cults from Rome and Greek civilizations? And... Uh, how does that influence how we worship today? Um, also, too, uh, there may have been influence. Well, there's tons of influences, but that being that being that being two of them. So, if we say Jesus' message uh, and Jesus, the original about Jesus, made him different from Mendoza and Honey, the circle drawer, and a religion was made about him, and he was different. He said he was different. Um, how does that compare? How does the setup of early Christianities compare to the other mystery cults that were in the area? So, uh, I don't know, friends. Just some thoughts. Uh, take care. And remember, if everybody's thinking alike, and somebody isn't thinking, and read the literature. All of it.